Welcome to the SOB Radio Show, where we have fun, interesting guests, and hot topics. Each week, we offer insights into music, fashion, health, fitness, and humor. Do you have the perfect guest for us to interview? I want to know. Drop me a line on our Facebook page at Spunky Old Broad 1, or reach out to me on our website at SpunkyOldBroad.com. And now, back to the show. I'm back with award-winning graphic designer for Fogue Magazine and brand profit builder, Ann Bennett. Ann, uh, we've been having this discussion about, you know, women and their work and their home life, etc. But what, in your opinion, is our best bet to express our value in a way that captivates the market? Because it's a crowded market out there and it is getting more crowded every single day. So what would your suggestion be to, to, how, to the way we can express our value that's different than anyone else's? Well, I think, you know, it's such an interesting question, Gail, because people are so, I was just listening to um, this incredible makeup artist talk about how she became so incredibly successful. And I think it's really true. We look out there and we try to see who's successful and then do what they're doing. And the truth of it is you have your own way of doing things. Like that's why I love the disruptors, right? Because they're just owning it. They're like, yeah, we're troublemakers. We're rebels. We're going to, you know, upset things. That's just one personality aspect, right? Like I think people, most people that are, that are in life, we are geared, uh, you know, our DNA is to grow, is to change and to grow and to expand. That's just a natural uh, way of doing things. And I think when we're challenged at, at, at ages, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 and beyond, it's really, really important to hold yourself like, I have all this wisdom, I've done all these things, I am very capable. I think most women can run a small country because they run everybody else's lives. It's very challenging for women to turn the uh, attention and, and step into the spotlight around their businesses or their lives and really acknowledge uh, the power that they have. The, the real thing that separates you from everybody else, because we have our, our basic Maslow's hierarchy of need, that we're all as human beings we want to, to have in our lives. And then we have our points of view, the, the things that have happened to us in our life experiences that have created our sense of our belief systems. Uh, the things that I say that, you know, make you hop and mad and break your heart are the things that actually you want to express in your business so that people see you, you're actually doing something bigger than whatever your business is. So I know for you, Gail, it's like you have the show. You want to impact a lot of people. You want to empower, you know, the women of the world. That's something people can get excited about and stand behind. Same in my business. I'm all about people being fully self-expressed, feeling the power of who they actually are without that they have to have a huge bank account necessarily or whatever people think success is for them, you know, but really to love and honor who they are. So I think even though, so people come to me and they're like, yeah, I need, you know, uh, some messaging that makes me stand out or I need a logo or I need a website or I need all these things that to me are peripheral. Branding is not a logo or a tagline or colors. It's really about the expression of your values and who you are that separates you from other people. So when you can do that, you just stand out. Like, I don't have to say that much. I walk into a room. Actually, I don't walk into a room. You know that. I come into a room. I fill up the space with my energy. And then people ask me what I do. And I just say, it's smart to fit in, but it's brilliant to stand out. And they're like, oh, that's interesting. Tell me more. Exactly. And that's kind of why I'm the, I'm Dr. Gail, SOB, Spunky Old Broad, because that gets people's attention. And then they say, well, what is that? You know, or why are you or those kinds of things. And uh, uh, what you said earlier about uh, women running a country. I mean, I, 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 it's embarrassing 
to know that we have not elected a woman president when there are so many countries in the world who have uh, women yes. leaders, you know, uh, and they're doing yes. extremely well. And uh, yet here in the United States, I mean, it's poo-pooed. So I think it's, mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because certainly I would think a woman would be better organized than we are right now. <laughs> so so uh, <laughs> I have a tendency I, to agree. I have to say that. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, you, you say that a head-whipping hook is important and it's vital to your success. And I can tell you that when I introduce myself and I say, hi, I'm Dr. Gail S.O.B., spunky old broad, everybody's head does whip around. So tell mm -hmm. us about your head-whipping hook and why it's so vital to success. Well, here's the thing, Gail, as you know, you know, there's two billion websites, probably more now because people have been home. <laughs> busy, <laughs> busy at home. Uh, two billion websites. There's hundreds and thousands of marketing messages that we all get in our inbox, Facebook, Instagram. I mean, I'm busier, like you were saying, and I am too. I'm busier now than I was when I used to go networking in real, you know, in 3D. But now I'm like always busy because there's always something to do. And I think, you know, a head whipping the hook is psychological okay so a lot of branding and marketing is is psychology or what i call pop psychology of how the brain works how you get attention so we love as the, the brain as a, as a human we love things that are a routine 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 and then we want novelty oh let, let me, i'm going to take a vacation i'm bored i need to you know shake this up a little bit and a head whipping hook is something that when you're out with people, you say like spunky old broad and people are like, huh? It's like that Scooby-Doo moment. Ooh! So it's kind of like it interrupts the general conversation that's going on in people's head. And all of a sudden they notice something different. That's usually what I call surprise and delight. And they want to pay attention to it. It calls, it calls for attention. We're mostly, we're going throughout our lives on a more of a rote way. And we're here, this is what we hear. Wah, 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 wah. When somebody's right. introducing or talking about something, because we've heard it so many times. I'm like, people, this is boring. You got to like, you take the same concept and idea and you just change it slightly to make it into a hook. So like I was saying, you know, what if it was easy? Because everyone's like, it's so hard. It's so hard. It's so hard. I'm like, well, what if it wasn't? Yeah. And they're like, huh? <laughs> what? So, so, so is that the, really is that, to, to cause that? Is that the fastest way to get visibility and what you call make bank uh, is by having this head whipping hook? Well, it's. I call it the cherry on top or the crown jewel. What you really, oh. the fastest way to get visibility, obviously, is to speak and to share your philosophy, uh, your thoughts, um, what breaks your heart, uh, your personal life to whatever degree you'd like to share. We all are in this high tech, low touch, and right now we're in no touch. So what we're looking for is that and crave is that is that connection is how can I really be sharing something of um, that matters to me? When, I know when I started it, when we started in the, in the covid and isolating, it was rough. It was rough. I was really lonely. I'm a kind of a people person, although a slight introvert. So I like to go home and put my legs up on the couch, but uh, I was so used to being with people, speaking all over the country or networking, you know, all over the place. And I loved that. And then all of a sudden it was gone. And I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh, like everybody else. I was like, I live alone and I actually don't have any animals. So, and I love animals. So I would start to walk the neighborhood and talk to the dogs and the cats, you know, <laughs> Well, you know, it's true. Fix. it's true. I mean, I was on a plane three, four times a month. And to go from that, you know, I have four million miles on American, so you can imagine. 
uh, from going mm -hmm. from three, four trips a month to nothing and being in, in uh, uh, isolation for almost 20 weeks, um, it's, uh, it's different. But you know something? I like it. I, I um, you know, except for the fact that I, I do have homes in California and my son is in California and I want to get to California again. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm perfectly happy where I am. And um, that is amazing to me. But I've always kind of made my own happiness. I've just always made my own amusement, so to speak. So, um, you know, very important. You, your mantra. Okay, but I was worried that way. Yeah, the your mantra is the more fun I have, the more money I make. Uh, that is not the case for everybody. So tell us how that works, because I'm sure people listening want to know how that how does how do that do that. Work? How does that work, right? Well, yeah. I think what's really fascinating is um, everything is energy, right? And and everything is about um, the vibe and the level of energy in which you. Uh, take action. So we can't always be in the flow. I'm reading this book right now about the flow. So it's like support myself to be in the state of flow, which is when, you know, you're totally focused and everything lines up. You forget your name, the time, where you are. I'm imagining, Gail, you do this quite a bit in your own work creative people have a tendency to spend more time in the flow than those that are more um, structured, if you will, in a sense of how they linearly think about stuff. But I think um, it's so important to uh, allow yourself to be that focused on something. You know, people distract themselves 24 seven TV news, TV, news, <laughs> other yeah, things. Yeah, and that, now there's more ways to distract yourself than ever. I mean, I've never seen so many streaming platforms or new platforms that come on board, and it's the latest thing. And uh, I, I, it just uh, amazes me that people have time for all of that. Yeah, we find time for things. It's so it is extraordinary. I find you know just turning on Facebook sometimes is I fall down the rabbit hole. Because I'm not just going to Facebook all of a sudden. I'm watching a video or I'm doing something else. And so there's a discipline that I need to do for myself to keep myself from running all over the place. You know, well, and that's so mostly, true. Yeah. yeah I agree. You've got to really put a timer on or make a decision in your calendar. I'm going to spend, you know, a lot of times I'll watch videos while I'm having lunch. So if I want to catch up on, you know, a podcast or a video or something that I'm interested in, I'll watch it and, and eat lunch. It's just like my company uh, during lunch. And I think, you know, people have different habits. And as entrepreneurs, it's very important because you're setting your own time and your own energy of how you want to spend it. I find the more concentrated I am in short amounts of time, this works for me, the shorter the time, the more I get done. So everything expands into however much time you have. So if you're like, yeah, I could do it later, or oh, I'm going to do this all day long, I don't get as much done. I kind of horse around and get distracted, read books. You know, it's like, it's like yeah. the college kid who has six weeks to write a term paper, and the night before it's due, he's, he's or she's just, you know, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I'm going to be up all night. And then they, everybody feels sorry for them because they're all up all night doing their term paper, even though they had six weeks to do it in. It's the same philosophy. Exactly. And, and I'm that person. So, I mean, I'm just, instead of trying to be someone else, like the one that plans ahead, I, I've learned to plan, actually. The one that plans ahead, the one that, the one that knows, you know, that everything, is, all the ducks are lined up before I'm going to do something. So for, for instance, you know, the virtual summit that I met you on again, we met again on, on uh, the virtual uh, new media summit. I wrote that piece that, won, that got me to win the podcast pitch. I wrote that piece the night before. Well, you know, the thing <laughs> is, is that, you know, you said, you know, you, 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 you do plan. Well, that's called survival. You know, we have yeah. to plan. I mean, you have to 
there's certain things you learn to do to be successful in business. And planning is one of them. I mean, I built a company from zero to seven offices and 350 people. You don't do that on a lark. On the other hand, no. uh, you know, I mean, there were certain things that I, I had to learn that I had to do to make that successful. On the other hand, you know, uh, I still had my, well, let's do it by the seat of our pants kind of thing. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. But what is the new way to market your business that makes you irresistible and attracts your ideal clients like crazy? Is there a new way or is it just a, an adjustment of what was? You know, that's such an interesting question, Gail, because we're finding ourselves moving, I think, two camps, but we're moving pretty far away from the traditional marketing, uh, beating people over the head kind of marketing. You know, I get 10, 20 emails from somebody in a, in a week. Um, we're just so inundated with uh, uh, choices and different things that we could do that um, it's very, very important to tell a story. Storytelling to me is the new marketing. The reason for that is, is we, we want to learn as, as basic human being. Everybody wants to learn something, whatever their interests are, whether it's car mechanics or it's um, fashion. <clears throat> Everybody wants to learn things. And um, the way that we are relating to each other is, is very old, old historically, old school. Like when you're a child, probably if you're lucky as I was as a kid, my mother used to read to us before we go to bed. She would read nursery rhymes or Dr. Seuss or, or something. We'd hear these stories over and over and over. So they became a part of who we are. Same thing with originally uh, the primitive, the first people on the planet. I wouldn't exactly call them primitive, but the first people on the planet before there was writing and movies and all this other stuff, they told stories to each other, stories of the hunt, stories of the family, stories of things that happened during the day. And we've kind of lost this storytelling uh, or even conversational listening uh, and having an opinion, we've kind of lost this. And it's a new surgence now in, in marketing and how we relate to each other. People will remember how you made them feel, but they don't remember what you said or what you did. So the story really gives a feeling tone so people can relate to you. In fact, the more personal it is, the more universal well, that's what they say. They say facts, facts tell and stories sell. That's the that's the mm -hmm. uh, mantra. So um, you're absolutely right. right. And and it's interesting because sometimes people don't want to share stories because they either think it's too personal or people don't want to know uh, their their history or their personal life or you know struggles they've been through. But that's not true. It it really ties you to the person it makes you relate mm -hmm. uh and it's it's really interesting uh so uh, the fact of telling stories i think is is really really important so you know if if you were to to suggest to these women who are listening because this is a show for women 50 plus if you were to to talk to these women who are listening to this show um what what is the one piece of advice you would give them that you think is the most important thing for them to do for their future, regardless of who they are or what they're doing? Uh, I was just thinking, it's an exercise that uh, I give to my clients. So if you can take 30 minutes of time to yourself, pull out sheets of, a couple sheets of paper and write a hundred things that you've done in your life that you've accomplished or that you've done. And it doesn't have to be uh, earth shattering or, um, you know, impacting, you know, countries and things like that, but just things that you've actually done. Cause I think, um, particularly as women, we don't think about the things that we've actually accomplished. We're just heading off into the future. 
or we'll go, yeah, you know, I don't remember what I did yesterday. The joke about right now is like, what day is it, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> no one can remember what day it is. But if you could take some time to yourself and actually write out, there's a couple ways to get to it. One, one way is to say to yourself, what have I done in my life? And go back to, you know, I went to nursery school or I went here and I did this and I did that and I did a report and just, just you know, running on through your life. Or you can ask yourself, what are the talent, skills, and abilities that God has given me, that, that God gave to me, that you just innately do, naturally? And see if you can write about 100, because you get to about 25, and you're like, uh, you start to really get, um, things start to happen after about number 50 on your list. Because you start to see all the things that you've actually done. Yeah, really that's really a great small. suggestion. That's a great suggestion. You and know, it I gives think people, yeah, it's yeah. like you're 50 years old or 60 years old or 70, 80, however old you are. You know, my age is just a number and it's not listed. But it's well over 50. Um, I'm living my biggest life right now. That's it's not slowing point. down or getting smaller. It's getting That's bigger. The point. That's the point, is that you don't have to slow down, and it can only get bigger. Well, first of all, we're coming to the end of the show, and uh, I know you've got this wonderful gift for our listeners on how to create a badass client-getting brand. So, ladies, <laughs> if you are in business and if you are thinking about going into business, this is a great uh, gift, how to create a badass client-getting brand. And uh, it's up on our show notes, uh, but to give you the idea, it's http colon slash slash bit dot ly slash client getting brand. So, and tell them where they can reach you. Tell them, um, you know, how to get in touch with you, all of those good things. Well, I think the, the, what I would love is to have you come over and like my business page on Facebook, which is Ann Bennett marketing um and reach out reach out pm me i'm always available to have conversations with people and um you know they can go over to my website and at marketing.com um but i really love to hear from people you know and i think it's it's so important right now that we all support each other that we all reach out to each other i've made more friends on facebook during this time that I think I've made the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's important too. Uh, and that's Ann, A-N-N, no E, A-N-N, Bennett, B-E-N-N-E-T-T dot com and Ann Bennett Marketing dot com. Um, I, I uh, really appreciate everything that you uh, have said today, Ann. And just in case, folks, you're not sure where you can find me, I'm at spunkyoldbroad.com. My Courses are at sobuniversity.com. If you decide you would like to join our virtual SOB club, just go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash virtual SOB club. And um, if any of you want to um, contact me, you can do that on the website. And if you put in your message gift, I will send you a gift as well. So uh, there's lots of things you can get by following both and following me. Hopefully, uh, that will be something you, you enjoy doing. So, Anne, what's in the future for Anne Bennett? Oh, wow. You know, that's what I think is so important for people, actually, that pulls you forth is you have a future, right? Like, people stop dreaming for some reason. Oh, I'm over 50. I don't have any dreams anymore. It's like, no, that's when they get really vivid. <laughs> so, I mean, for me, I'm really excited about this period of cocooning, I call it, where I can really look at a deeper level, look at what I'm doing um, and how I'd like to do it. And it's really pushing me to build my courses online and do more video. And, and um, I am looking forward to speaking on larger stages and being with more people. And uh, I can't wait for when I can just go outside without a mask. <laughs> well, folks, that's the clue. Uh, if we're going to get Ann on a stage, if we're going to get me on a stage, wear your mask. 
uh, stay socially distanced, and uh, just be smart about what you're doing. Yeah. So thank you for being with us, Anne. It's been a delight. Uh, hopefully people will go to your site. Hopefully people will get your gift. And thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Gail. My pleasure. Hi, this is Dr. Gail, and I wanted you to know I have a whole bunch of other things to offer you. If you go to spunkyoldbroad.com, you will see an array of SOB stuff for sale and all our latest products and additions. If you're interested in getting on TV, I have a brand new course, Get on TV. And if you want to start your own business, you'll want my SOB Guide to Business Success. I know you'll love them all. I guarantee it.